this town's changed People rearrange It's not quite like Now there's raging at night But the morning's much like you With its lavender hue I don't want detention. Drake and I are playing Hunter's Watch after school. Boys. Have you seen my boo notebook, the one with the spirals? You are not making us late for school again. You put it in your backpack at breakfast. Oh yeah. Your lunch. Thanks. It's 8.02, mom. Hey. Yeah, I finished it. It was only 20 questions. Okay, everybody in the car. Uh, was anybody gonna tell me? Brennan. Okay, sure. I'll head that way now. Is this a 55A? A homicide? Okay, I'll be right there. Someone died? An elderly woman up on Briar Rock. She's a mountain woman, there's no ID. There's still mountain people living up there? A few, as far as anyone can tell. Why are you getting the call? The store manager in town thinks she may have been keeping a boy on her homestead. If so, he's up there all alone. Well then, you better hurry. I'll run the kids to school. What about your writing deadline? It's all up here. Typing it out is just a formality. Thank you. I'm gonna be late! And I'm gone. Good luck finding the boy. If there is one. The store manager said she ordered her supplies under the name Lila Mae Whitaker. So we have an ID then. Yeah, it could be an alias. He also had an order from Nathaniel Hawthorne. Coroner's best guess is she was in her mid 80s. So why are we assuming she had a kid? Yeah, she ordered a copy of Tom Sawyer. So she likes Twain. And a pair of size 10 male work boots. The storekeeper is quite the detective. <laughs> he should come work for us. Well, this may all be a wild goose chase, but if we suspect there's a minor involved, we have to check it out. We sure this is the right path? I have no idea. According to the chopper survey, there's supposed to be a thick cluster of trees over that ridge that could cover a house. Let's check it out. Hold on. You better come look at this. Well, I'll be. Jeremiah Whitaker. Could be the husband. This isn't new. Let's keep moving. Keep your eyes open. Most people up here are friendly, but a few wave hello with their shotguns. Sheriff's Department, anyone home? Oh. 
Hello? We don't have a warrant to go in. Let's come to the property. There's definitely someone living here. Brennan! On it! The male between 15 and 18, he just vanished. All right, I'll head down this way. He may cut back to the cabin. I'll do a sweep here and meet you back up the hill. Be careful. We have no idea what this kid is like. Don't hesitate to defend yourself if you have to. You gave me quite a chase there. My name is Deputy Brennan. I'm with the County Sheriff's Department. We need to talk. I'm not here to hurt you. I just need to make sure you're all right. Any chance you could come out of there? Do you know Alila May Whitaker? Yes. Is she your grandmother? No, she looks after me though. There's no easy way to say this. She passed, didn't she? I'm afraid so. Are you here alone? Pat passed a while back. I found this wooden bird. I think maybe you dropped it? It's beautiful. Did you make it? It's Graham's. Pap littered it for her. What about your mom or dad? They ever come around? No, I ain't ever... I, I haven't ever seen them. Brennan, have you spotted him? Oh, it's okay. It's okay, it's just my radio. I've read about radios. Yeah, he's here. On my way. No, no, don't come down just yet. We're talking. Are you good? Yeah, he seems okay. Who are you talking to? The county sheriff. He's been helping me look for you. Does it play music too? My radio? No. No, it's not that kind of a radio. Do you like music? My phone can play music. Your telephone? Yeah. See? I don't see any wires. Have you ever been off this mountain before? No, ma'am. My grand said if ever I leave this mountain, folks down below might never let me come back. You said you read about radios. Do you like to read? Yes, ma'am. I have books on a shelf near my bed. I have bunches of them, 12 in all. I've read them so many times, I can almost say them by rote. Except in the Bible. I'm still working on learning it, and I, that's a big one. But my grand wants me to have that one right up here, so that I can use it whenever I need it. She promised me that when I would finish reading the whole thing, cover to cover, that she would use her wool money to buy me a copy of Tom. What's your name? Finch. Oh, like the bird. My gran raised a baby bird she found alone in the woods. She used to say that when I was little, I reminded her of the finch. So that's where she got my name. Look, Finch, I'm afraid it's time to go. Oh. Well, thanks for looking after me. Maybe you could come visit again sometime. No, no, that's not what I mean. We're going to need you to come with us. No, I'll be fine here. 
I can take care of myself. I like it here. I know you do. But, but you see, I'm responsible for you now. And I have to make sure that you have enough good food to eat, that you get a good education. Well, there's plenty of food to be had here. And I've got my books to learn from. But you said you already knew them all. Wouldn't you like to read new books? Go to a library? To a library? Yeah. There they have hundreds and hundreds of books about anything you can imagine. And they're all free. Hundreds? But what about the homestead? And the animals? I have to stay here. And I have to take care of everything. We'll resettle the animals for you. I don't know. Brennan, we need to head out. Oh. Finch, it's time. Sheriff's waiting. It's not for good. I'm coming back. Okay. If you did your reading last night, the quiz will be easy. Thomas Jefferson once said, nothing can stop the man with the right mental attitude from achieving his goal. Nothing on earth can help. Toby, clear your desk, please. See me after class. Toby, you have not turned in your last four homework assignments, and you are now failing this class. You're capable of passing. I've seen what you can do when you apply yourself. Is something preventing you from doing your work? Is there a problem at home? No. Look, I'm willing to work with you, but you have to meet me halfway. I will take your back work at a reduced grade if you get it into me by Monday. Otherwise, I'll have to call parent-teacher conference and sort this out. Can I give you another piece of advice? Take up a sport, join a club. The other kids might include you more if they got to know you a little bit better outside of class. Can I go now? Monday, that's the deadline. His first time in a car, won't this be fun? Hi, I need my car detail to get CPS down here. And get him some water and something to settle his stomach. What is this place? Is anybody seen Janie? Janie, where's my case file from yesterday? I'm on it. Yeah, no, that shouldn't be a problem, though. No. Yeah, I can get it for you. Yeah, okay, that's fine, I'm on. Extension 401, please. This is Janelle Brennan. Yes, I'll hold. Finch. Uh, Jeff, you got him flaming hot chips to settle his stomach? It helps me. Hey, sorry I'm late. Steve, I'm glad to see you. Finch, this is Steve Anderson with Child Protective Services. Child Protective? It's an agency designed to help young people in your situation. My situation? Yeah, you and I are going to go to my office. I'm going to get some information from you. Then we'll have a doctor check you out and get you assigned to a foster family. Foster family? Steve, this is all very new to Finch. You may need to go slowly and explain things in detail. Of course. Um, this is Paul Kramer. He's one of our foster parents. I need to take this. Yeah. Foster parents? You'll need to be placed in a temporary home with a family who will look after you. But you said that you were responsible for me. I, I didn't mean me personally. But that's what you said. Finch, it'll be all right. I know Paul Kramer. He has a wonderful family who will make sure you no, have no, everything no. you no, need. No, 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 no. I, I want to go back now. Whoa, easy, easy. I just need to go home. No one's going to hurt stop. you. Just calm down. Leave him alone. I really need to go home. Call Psych. We're bringing him in right now. He doesn't understand what you're doing. Let go of me. Just explain it to him, Steve. Hey, sorry I'm late. Crazy day. Welcome home. Uh, 
Lisa, the school called to say you failed every class and you're gonna have to repeat the sixth grade. Okay. Jack, NASA called. They definitely want you for the Mars mission. You leave in the morning. Mom, you're home. Oh, hi, Mom. There are my babies. Devices down. So, let's hear it. How was school? The teacher called Heath and me up to the board to solve a quadratic equation. What's a quadratic equation? It's a, a complicated math problem. And? Heath gives me this, yeah, right look, because he thinks he's the smartest guy in the class. And? Nailed it. Heath had to get help from the teacher to finish it. <laughs> up top. Yes. <laughs> Where's Toby? He lost track of time over at Drake's. He's on his way home now. Well, this looks wonderful. I am starving. Did you find what you were looking for? Yeah, we found him. Dad finished chapter 21 of his book today. He did? That's wonderful. Yep, I have one more chapter to finish before the manuscript deadline on Monday. We have to keep the house quiet this weekend so Dad can write. Mm. I volunteered to go stay at Dina's. Oh, that's quite the sacrifice. <laughs> it's vital to support the arts. <laughs> <laughs> and I said that if Toby makes me mad, I'll scream into my pillow so I won't book Dad. I like the way you're planning ahead. You're almost an hour late. Sorry. How was your day at school? Fine. Oh, I almost forgot. I got an A on my science report on frogs. Hey, congratulations, champ. Toby, you never told me how you did on your math test last week. You never asked. So, Deputy Brennan, a.k.a. Supermom, found a lost boy up in the mountains today and rescued him. I don't know about rescuing, but yes, we brought down a boy who'd been living up in the mountains. Like Mowgli? Was he raised by wolves? Seriously? No, Jack. He had a human family. Was he wild and grungy looking? No. There was nothing wild about him. He's probably dumb as a rock if he's never been to school. He's a normal boy, just like everyone else. No one's He's any. a bright, caring young man with human feelings. I don't know why everyone has to judge him because he's different. Fine. We get it. Sorry, Mom. No, I'm sorry. I just... So what kinds of things does he like to do? Yeah. Does he hunt bears? <laughs> I don't know. He raises sheep and pigs. Um, he likes to go fishing, but mostly he loves to read. <laughs> sounds fun. I don't know. That sounds pretty good to me. Sounds like my kind of kid. Brennan, I need your report on the Finch boy ASAP. CPS wants to file in front of the judge today. Can we move Finch out of cell four? I've got a perp coming in. What do you mean cell four? I'll be in my office. Before you start, the kid had to sleep in a jail cell last night because I didn't have any place else to put him. What about the Kramers? Couldn't take him. They said they couldn't handle his special needs. So you put him in jail? For his own safety. We did everything we could to make him comfortable. Don't worry, CPS has already found foster placement. He's going there tonight. I should hope so. Who's taking him? He's going to the Bartlow house. That can't be right. The Bartlow house is shut down. I busted him for possession two weeks ago. Nope, he got out on a technicality. You're gonna send the boy to Bartlow? What, was Charles Manson's house full? It's CPS's call. I don't have a choice. Bartlow is not a real foster home. It's a drug cartel. He uses those kids to make his runs. We don't have a say in this. Maybe you don't, but I do. Brennan. No, you have seen him, Bob. He's lost. He wouldn't last one night at Bartlow's. Janelle. Hines, forward my calls, will you? Sure thing. I'll be at the courthouse. Hines! I'm sorry, Lieutenant. Judge Raymond is in court today. Can I make you an appointment? This is urgent. I can't make it. Marguerite! Marguerite, am I glad to see you. Janelle, how are you? Do you have the CPS case for the Finch boy from Briar Rock? No, Jason in the state office is handling that one. Why? Can you get it? They placed the boy at Ernest Bartlow's house. I thought Bartlow was in jail. Exactly. He has got to go someplace else. Even if I could get the case reassigned, once he's placed, I can't remove him without cause. Cause? You know what Bartlow is. 
Well, he's never been convicted. Besides, there's no place else for the boy to go. I'll take him. Place him with me. <laughs> Janelle, you have to be certified for foster care. I am. We are. Keith and I are certified. We had to be before we adopted Jackson. I could have the paperwork to you within the hour. I'm sorry. I don't like Bartlow any more than you do. But rules are rules. And right now, neither one of us has the authority to move the boy. So if you'll excuse me, I'm late. Adoption. What? If Finch was being adopted, he could be pulled from Bartlow's. That's true, but... I, okay. I, so we're adopting him. Janelle, you could transfer him to us right away, today. You, you can't just pretend to want to adopt. It'll buy him some time until I can find him a safer home. What am I supposed to tell the judge? Or the boy, for that matter? That Keith and I are giving him a home. For how long? Keith doesn't even know that we're having this conversation, does he? For however long it takes. I promise you, Marguerite, I will not dump Finch back into the system. I will take care of him until a permanent home can be found. I hope you know what you're doing. So you'll talk to Judge Raymond this afternoon? I'll see what I can do, but I'm not making any promises. Please, make it happen, Marguerite. I don't know how you pulled this off. Don't ask. Hey, can we talk? We'll uh, leave you to it. <clears throat> Look, Finch. I want to go home. I'm afraid that's not possible. Are you going to lock me up again? Because if you don't, I'm going to find a way back to that mountain. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'll take you back. But before we go, I'd like you to come to my house for dinner and meet my family. Your family? Yeah, my husband and my three kids. I have a son who's just your age. I'd like you to meet them. Will you do that for me? And then we'll go back. If that's what you want, yes. Will we ride in the car again? No, I completely understand. Hi, Dad. Shh. He's on the phone. I'm going to go say hello to Lenny. Rats don't talk. He's not a rat, he's a hamster. Oh, well, in that case... Well, I appreciate you calling. This smells delicious. I'm starving. I thought you were staying at Dina's this weekend. Her brother decided to come home from school, so they're having some family time together. I'm going to my room. That was your history teacher, Miss Garnett, on the phone. Oh? Anything you want to tell me? Dinner smells good. Don't give me that attitude. Well, what do you want me to say? I'm sorry? I'm sorry I don't get straight A's like Lisa? Nobody expects that. Yeah, because I'm your dumb kid. Oh, come on, Toby. You know that's not what I meant. I'll be up in my room. And then we'll sit down with your mother and talk about this after dinner tonight. You have a publishing deadline, remember? We'll talk. Sure we will. Lenny's gone! I can't find him anywhere! Did you close his cage after you fed him this morning? I thought I did! We have to find him! You live here? Yeah. It's really big. It's like having the outside on the inside. Hmm. I never thought of it that way before. You can put your stuff down right over there. Let me go find everyone and I'll introduce you.
I don't see him anywhere. Hey, what's going on? Lenny got out again. Oh. That rat better not come near me. He's not a rat. Take Sebastian outside, please, and uh, go finish the salad. Thank you. Have you checked your closet? He likes to get in your shoes. No. Take Lenny and put him back up in his cage. Cage? You know, you really should try raising rabbits. That thing's hardly a mouthful. Ugh. No, hamsters aren't for eating. They're pets. Uh, who is this guy? Oh, I'm sorry. Everyone, this is Finch. I invited him to stay with us for dinner. I'm Keith. Hi. So how do you two know each other? Finch is the young man I met up on Briar Rock yesterday. This is the hillbilly you rescued? Ow! Finch, these are our children. Lisa, Toby, and Jack. You've met Lenny. Dinner, huh? What's he gonna eat? We'll go put Lenny away. And we'll finish up in here. Toby and Lisa, set the table, please. And Finch, why don't you go wash up? Why is he here? Because I invited him. So be polite, and please do not use the word hillbilly again. Fine. How about yokel? Toby? Where did he get those clothes? I imagine they're homemade. That's how they do things where he's from. That's not all they do. <laughs> Look. Oh no! He's a total nut job. Look, it's only for a couple of hours, so let's try and make him feel at home. Dina is not going to believe this. This all looks wonderful. Yeah, I'm starving. <laughs> what? Finch, would you like to say grace for us? Thank you, God, for your bountiful provision and for letting me spend time with this nice family. Amen. 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 Finch, I hope you like spaghetti. I don't believe I've met her, man. <laughs> <laughs> Guess first. Finch, spaghetti isn't a person. It's the name of this food. Oh. It comes from a country known as Italy. Actually, it originated as Chinese noodles. Marco Polo introduced it to the Italians when he returned from China. I don't know if I like Chinese noodles. Don't be an idiot. Toby, that's enough. You need salad. Uh, so, Finch, Janelle tells me that you're an avid reader. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's your favorite book? Oliver Twist. Dickens! <laughs> he is my favorite as well. Have you ever read David Copperfield? No, sir. After dinner tonight, I'll take you to the library, and you can see my 1917 illustrated edition. The artwork is stunning. You have a library? I do. After dinner, we'll uh, take you on a tour. Oh, speaking of books, how did your meeting with the editor go? Oh, uh, he said as long as I make my deadline this weekend, we're good to go for a November release, right before the Christmas shopping season. How do you, how do you like spaghetti, Finch? Nice. Did I do something wrong? No. No. When in Rome. <laughs> mm. It tastes better this way. Come on, Toby. Toby. It's easy. Mm. Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I got some in my beard. <laughs> I'll save it for later. <laughs> they finally snap. <laughs> That kid is amazing. He took one look at the library, and he got that expression that Jack gets when we go to the pet store. There are more books in there than he ever knew existed. He picked up my Walden and started quoting Thoreau to me. <laughs> what teenager today can do that? Where is he now? Jack took him out to the treehouse. Listen, I have something to tell you all about Finch. CPS took him in, but he has no place to go. Last night he slept in a jail cell at the station because they couldn't place him anywhere. Today, they were going to place him with a known drug felon. To stop that from happening, I told them that we were adopting him. What? He's staying? Not with us. We're not really adopting him. It's just a cover until I can find him a safe family that will take him permanently. How could you decide this without talking to me first? There was no time. And he was in danger. I don't want him here. He's so weird. He wanted to eat to Lenny. He needs our help. And it's just for a little while. I don't believe this. At least with Jackson, you asked us before we adopted him. Keith, I'm sorry. What were you thinking, Janelle? He needs my help. Sometimes I need your help too. You know how important this deadline is to me. You know how important becoming a writer is to me. I gave up a 15-year job at the investment firm to try for this. I know. This weekend was supposed to be about that. How am I supposed to finish my book when I have to waste all my time taking care of some backwoods orphan who doesn't know a faucet from an electric socket? I will take care of him. I promise you. You won't even know we're here. I'll talk to the kids and we'll keep the house quiet all weekend. And Monday, I'll find a family to take Finch. Mom? Honey? How long have you been standing there? Not long. We came in to get my walkie-talkies to take to the treehouse. We? Finch was here too, but he left. You suppose he heard us? Oh, he heard you. I'd better go find him. No, let me do it. No, you go right. He's my responsibility. No. I shouldn't have said what I said. I'll talk to him. Mom? Are you and Dad mad at each other? No, honey. We just had a little disagreement. About Finch? Yeah. I like him. Yeah, me too. Finch, wait up! You don't need to concern yourself with me, Mr. Brennan. Look, Finch, about what I said back there. I just came over for dinner because I was invited. I'm going home. Briar Rock is a long way from here. I'll get there. You know when you're hunting, you get focused on the deer or rabbit, and you don't see anything else? The woods around you disappear. All sound stops. All you hear is your heartbeat. All you see is the slightest movement of the prey. Yeah. That's how it is for my brain right now, about my book. I wasn't thinking about anyone else. I, I, I didn't mean any of those dumb things that I said back there. I can take care of myself, but no one listens to me. I believe that you can take care of yourself, but you don't have to. It's too late to go anywhere tonight. Come on back to the house with me. And stay with you. Not permanently. Just until you know what you want to do next. Hey, you can read David Copperfield while you're there. What do you say, Finch? Just for a little while. Did God tell you to come after me? Or did you just decide that on your own? I'm not sure what you mean. Whenever my grand had a big decision to make, she would stop for a minute and she would get real still and quiet. And I knew that she was praying to God on her head, asking him what to do. And then she would get this big smile on her face, and she would have her answer. It worked that fast every time? 
She said that because she's a simple lady, God usually kept the answers pretty simple too. <laughs> he often said yes and no or we'll see. That's how she kept on the right path. Is that how you do it, Mr. Brennan? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, if I'm honest, I usually jump in first and then ask God for a bailout later. That's not how I do it, Mr. Brennan. All right. Let's do it your grand's way. On a count of three, we'll ask together. One, two, three. We'll see. We'll see. Okay then. You know, you should write down some of your memories of your grand and pap. I'll bet you have some interesting tales to tell. My grand once took down a kugel with her knitting needles. That's what I thought. Toby, can I come in? I'm really busy. I've got homework to do. Toby, I'm sorry the way this all came out. I didn't mean to spring this on you. Where's Dad? He went to go find Finch. Figures. I think it would be better if we talked. There's nothing to talk about. If you would just open the door. Good night, Mom. Toby, please. Good night. Who is it? Miss Jessica Haig. Yeah, what? My name is Lane Billings. I'm with Alpha Gas Corp. Do I look like I need anything from a gas company? Oh, I have some papers here that you might be interested in reading. Could mean some money for you. Who do you think you are? I'm calling the police. Oh, 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 oh. <coughs> oh no. I don't think you want the police to come in there, do you? I mean, not with what they would find. You don't know anything about me. Jessica Haig, 32, never been married. Dropped out of Marsh County High at 16. Your mother kicked you out of your home when she discovered you were pregnant. You bounced around from friend's house to friend's house till you used them all up. Then you disappeared out near Briar Rock Mountain for approximately three weeks, then resurfaced with no child to speak of. Hmm. You've been busted twice for possession, you like Will Ferrell comedies, and your favorite soda is Mountain Dew. Seems to me I know you fairly well. What do you want? <laughs> the real question is, what do you want? What are you offering? Security. Not to mention a chance to see your son. 
my son. Mm-hmm. You've seen my boy? Mm-hmm. How is he? Oh, he's fine. And you're both about to do a lot better. But I haven't caught anything yet. He's coming and he's still wearing those clothes. You stop worrying about it. I'm going over to Drake's. I was hoping we all could... No thanks. What about breakfast? I'm not hungry. Morning, Finch. Good morning. Cool! Is, is that... I hope you're hungry. I am, but I didn't catch anything. Oh, that's all right. I already went hunting at the grocery store. I want to go hunting. Jackson. Is that what you do first thing every morning? Mostly. Sometimes I fish. Can we go fishing? Not today. Your father has his writing deadline, so we're getting out of the house. I was thinking we could go show Finch around town. What do you say, Finch? Is there something in particular you'd like to see or do? Can we go see a movie? Yeah! A movie? What do you say? Would you like that? I think so. I've never seen one before. A movie it is then. Mom. His clothes. Let's do something about it then. Like things went well. We have had a good day. I should have known you'd pull it off. Where's Toby? Isn't he here? No, I thought he was with you. No, he went to Drake's this morning, but he should have been back by now. Huh. I'll text Ruth. How did the writing go? 
Great, Tiger. Thanks for asking. I've been at it all day. I've written about 20 pages of good stuff. I'm really happy with it. Did you finish the book? Not yet, but I'm really close. I'm gonna go upstairs and take a shower. And I have to go feed Lenny. What about you, Finch? Did you have a good time? It was mighty fine. And I'm tuckered out. Right now I think I'll go read my book and go to bed. Oh, Finch, uh, I found this empty journal in the library. Thought you might want to use it to write down some of your memories from Briar Rock Mountain. Thank you. I, I will, I'll start on it tonight. Right after I finish the next chapter of David Copperfield. Oh, uh, the book is on the desk in the library. Ruth said that Toby left their house right after lunch. Did she say where he went? She thought he was coming here. I called his phone, it went directly to voicemail. You don't think anything happened? No, I'm sure he'll be home soon. Okay, I'll make a few more calls and see if anyone has seen him. Did you find your book? Whoa, whoa, what did you do? I, I knocked something over and I touched this. What, what did you touch? Just this. Get up, get up! Well, come back. You had no business touching this. I just wanted to read your book. But, and now it's gone. I didn't mean to. Go. I'm sorry. Go! He spilled water all over the computer. It's fried. I lost everything. Do you have a backup? It has a backup drive in it. It may still work. Call Uncle Jerry. He works in computers. Yeah, he'll know what to do. You call him. I'll clean up. And where have you been? Your mother and I were worried. I went over to Steve's. I forgot to call. Sorry. When will you realize that sorry doesn't magically fix everything? You should have called us and told us where you were. I just forgot. Well, you won't forget this. You're grounded. One week. You're not leaving this house except for school. Got it? I got it! You know what this means, don't you? I didn't mean to. If he loses that book, he'll be finished as a writer. Finished? You should have stayed on that mountain where you belong. Listen, I'm really sorry. I didn't know- Dad I never should have let you in this house. He didn't want to, but Mom made him. He asked me to stay. What? You think he wanted you here? The only reason he's letting you stay is because Mom promised to get rid of you first thing Monday morning. You are not a part of this family, and you never will be.
bench. Did you stay out here all night? What's this? I did what you said. I wrote down memories of Grand and Pap, so I'll always have them. Finch, this is really good. You're an excellent writer. You think so? Yeah, I do. But we better get you inside, warm you up. Janelle has some breakfast ready. I can't go back. I've caused too much trouble. Well, you can't stay here. We'll figure it out. Might take us a little longer than expected, but we'll find you a home. I told you to stay out of my room. I wasn't in your room. Boys! Then why is my hoodie on your bed? I don't know. Mom, can I go to Sophie's? Have you finished sweeping the porch? Is that my hat? Get out of my room! Not yet. I'll do it after. You know the rules. Give them to me. Boys, keep it down! Not until your chores are done. It'll be too late then. Mom, Toby hit me! I did not. You're such a Mom, baby. please. Enough! Your dad is writing! Jack, go outside and play. Toby, go into Jack's room, get your things out of there, and apologize for hitting him. Lisa, chores first. Okay. I didn't touch him. I never get to go anywhere. Oh. What you doing? Recollecting. What's that mean? It means I'm writing down things that happened in the past. Like stories? Memories. Will you tell me one? Sure. Lisa, bitch is gonna tell me a story. You wanna hear it? Why not? Well, this one is about when my gran was laid up in bed and Pap had to make the lye soap by himself for the first time. Well, you look at that. Yeah, they've been at it for almost an hour now. No arguing and fighting. I know. I can't believe it either. Huh. I just wish Toby was out there with him. What about us? Why aren't we out there with them? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that really happened. Come on, Finch, tell them about the lie soap. That one's really funny. Uh, Finch might need to take a break. He's been at it for a while now. I'm so glad you're writing these down. Mm. These are priceless memories. Well, my pap was the storyteller. After dinner, we would sit on the porch and he would weave Grand and I the wildest tales. And we would laugh until we had tears in our eyes. <laughs> And he always swore they were all true, but after he passed, Grant told me that he would just make them up while he was doing his chores. <laughs> <laughs> you should write your pap stories down too. You could make a whole book out of them. I think he would have liked that. I'm sure he'd be so proud to know his stories are still making people happy. Looks like you're gonna need some more journals. Or maybe a laptop computer? No. <laughs> Thank you, I will stick to my pencil. <laughs> 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 yes, that is correct. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Well, Marguerite. Hey, let me call you back. What are you doing here? I know how eager you are to find a placement for Finch. Well, we were, but things went really well this weekend. Keith and I talked about it last night, and if you can't find a family- Oh, but I already have. That's what I came by to tell you. Finch's birth mother contacted CPS. His birth mother? But we don't know who she is. Well, we do now. She came by with two attorneys and a full affidavit explaining everything that happened down to the smallest detail. She's even consented to a blood test. It's definitely her. And she wants full custody. So you and Keith are off the hook. Why is she showing up now? Where has she been for the last 16 years? Well, I thought you'd be happy about this. She abandoned him with strangers and didn't contact him for 16 years. Excuse me for questioning her character. Oh, Janelle, please tell me, you're, you're not gonna try and fight this. And what happens if we do? <sighs> the judge would hear both parties and make a determination. But I have to warn you, Janelle, the law heavily favors the birth mother in these situations. Well, I don't. 
What happened? I, I thought that you wanted to find a permanent home for him. I do. I just want to make sure it's the right one. Okay, so what do we tell Finch? Nothing for now. Anything could happen before the judge is ruling. I mean, she could decide to disappear again. It's better not to get his hopes up until we know something for certain. Will the judge let him stay with us until the hearing? Do you want him to? It could take weeks. He's already here. We don't want to move him around again. And it's only for a little while. Are we crazy for getting mixed up in this? It's a little late for that, isn't it? Could you walk away from this now? No. Could you? No. Thank you. For what? For just being you. Did you pack my jello? Strawberry, it's in your bag. Yes! I'm going to Dina's after school to do homework. Will her mom be home? Uh-huh. Jake's big brother will be home. Nice try, but we talked about this. Straight home from school to do your homework. You can play Hunter's Watch with Drake next Saturday. Lisa gets to go. Sorry, that's how it is for now. Looking sharp. First day of school for Finch, Mom. Take a picture. We're gonna be late. Nope, Jack's right. It's tradition. We always take a picture the first day of school. It's not my first day of school. I'll be in the car. Toby! Okay. Come on, everybody. Move in close. Uh -huh. Got it. Get in the car. It's time to go. Hmm. Are you ready for this? I think so. I don't really know what it will be like. Just be yourself. Be friendly. Don't make too many A's on your first day, though. Lisa's accustomed to being the smartest one in the family. Oh, stop. <laughs> Don't be afraid to ask questions. Mm. And remember, Toby will be there to help you find everything. I'll be fine. Thank you. Well, get in the car then. We can't be late for your first day. I am sorry I'm late, youngins, but I lost my glasses in the teacher's lounge. But fear not, I have another pair here in my bag. Somewhere. Oh, here they are. A bit dirty, but look. Ooh. Oh, it looks like the ground flew up there for a minute. Oh, I hope you did your reading for today because I won't be passing out a quiz on chapter 46. Oh, 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 we have a unique new student with us today. Uh, join me in welcoming Mr. French Wagamaker. Mr. Wagamaker? French, why don't you come up and join us so we all know who you are? Well, they said he might be a little slow. <laughs> um, well, French, why don't you come up to the front, please? Me? Yes, come to the front, please. Everybody, this is French Wagonmaker. He's never been to a proper school before on account of he grew up on a mountain far away from normal people. <laughs> <laughs> on a mountain, right? <laughs> oh, I'll be, isn't that nice? Oh, everybody, join me in making French feel at home in our school. As soon as we read the quote of the day up on the board, we'll jump right into that quiz. <laughs> Alrighty then. Oh, since this is French's very first day with us, why don't we have him read the quote of the day and give us his opinion? French, read aloud the quote for us, please. Oh boy, I'm sorry I didn't mean to embarrass you, honey. 
They told me you could read. <laughs> no school should ever try to serve meatloaf. I swear, Miss Davenport's trying to kill us. So, where is he? He went to go find the bathroom. Yeah, but that was 20 minutes ago. This is ridiculous. We have to babysit him all day. I'm not babysitting anyone. Thanks for the help. Hey, he seems like a nice guy. Maybe a little clueless. A little brainless, too. You know that. Come on. Oh, oh, hey. oh, my goodness. Are you really a hillbilly? I don't really know what that is. Don't be rude. What? How long did you live up there? On the mountain? I was born there. So was there an entire village of mountain people, or just you? Just me and my grand. Yeah. Did you grow up wearing nothing but a loincloth like Tarzan? I didn't You have... didn't have a loincloth? <laughs> Cut it out, guys. What? Does he have a fan club now? People are just curious. He grew up in the woods. Big deal. Uh-oh. Someone sounds a little jealous. Don't start with me, man. You don't know who Tarzan is, do you? No. <laughs> so have you ever been on the internet before? I have a fishing net. <laughs> My pap and I made it. Pa pap? He's got a pap. Well, actually... That is so hillbilly. So, did you fish and hunt for food? That's cool. I mean, it's crazy, but it's cool. How is that cool? Well, maybe not to you, Caleb, but you wouldn't last more than five minutes in the wild. Yeah. Shut up. It's so true, though. Thanks for talking with me. Nice to meet you all. Hurry up, you're gonna make us late. What do you have on your arm? It's my locker combination. A girl wrote it on there for me. That's not a locker combination. Hurry up and get changed. We have PE next. See what I mean? Babysitting. He's fine. Hold up. You don't need to do that. Bring your gym clothes. We are running today. Are you fast? I think so. My gran and I never really raced much. Well, Toby's been the fastest kid in our class since fifth grade. It's about time somebody beat him. What makes you think he can beat me? I don't know. This guy's been running around a mountain his whole life. We spent six hours playing Hunter's Watch and eating potato chips last Saturday. I'd bet money on him. That's everyone, Coach Winklevoss. All right, runners. Let's go. Let's get those legs stretched out. Uh, and I don't want to hear any complaining. Today is a beautiful day for running. Okay, how do we feel back there? Since it's a new month, we have a new challenge. The student who has the fastest cumulative time in the 100 meter dash will win four tickets to the Cineplex Theater. Come on. Four? What? You don't like movies? You may as well hand them to Toby now. Save us all a lot of embarrassment. Yeah, <laughs> save time. Oh, come on now. That's the wrong attitude. You gotta work for it. Strive to be better every day. Line them up, people. First group of five. Those who are working for losing. On your mark, get set, go! You can do it, man! You can take them! Are you okay? Easy. Oh my Easy. gosh, okay. Easy. Okay. Don't, just let it's gonna go. be okay. You're gonna be okay. okay. Stand. Oh gosh. There you go. Hup. Easy. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. What kind of cheap shot was that, dude? We just bumped. It happens. Is he okay? Don't worry, kids. I think it'll be okay. What? What was that? I won fair and square. Jerk move. Mm -hmm. It was an accident. What's their problem? Where are you going? 
I'm going to make sure he knows where the bathroom is this time. Try not to kick anyone else while I'm gone. Look at you, hitting the books. It's not like I have a choice. I'm grounded, remember? I do. You know, I was thinking next weekend, maybe we should go camping. Get some fresh air, clear our heads a bit. Really? Yeah, it's been a long time. I could finally teach you how to fish. <laughs> yeah, okay. My rods are too big for Jack though. We'll have to stop and pick up a smaller one for him. Jack? Though Finch says he makes his own fishing rods out of tree branches, he could teach us how to do that. I can't. I told Drake I'd meet him on Saturday. Oh, come on. You can't miss a few hours of video games for a camping trip with your family. Family? You know what? I'm getting tired of your attitude. You are part of a family. And being part of a family means you take time and invest in your family. I'm going to finish in my room. No, you're always hiding in your room. You need to be down here interacting with the rest of us. It's not so healthy for you to be so isolated all the time. Oh, so now I'm not healthy, is that it? I just want you to make a stronger effort to be part of the family, that's all. Sorry to be such a disappointment to you. Hey, look at me. Look at me. That is not how I feel. You are my son. Just not the one you wanted. What? That's why you went out and found another one, isn't it? That's why you went out and got Jack. Only I guess he didn't fit the bill either. Is that what you think? Now you've got Finch. You finally found your kind of kid. Now you guys can go fishing and write bestsellers together. Toby! Yeah. Keith, we have a problem. Come on, Drake, you can't get out of it. We've had this plan for a while. Okay, look. This isn't about what happened at school, right? Yeah, no, I get it. Maybe a movie on Sunday? Yeah, sure. Some other time then. Marguerite! Janelle! Listen, there's something wrong here. Something is off about this whole thing. Look, Janelle, this really isn't your call to make. Finch's mother insisted on temporary custody until the hearing. The judge is granting it. But why so fast? She hasn't shown any interest in him since he was born. And now all of a sudden she can't live a day without him? Maybe she didn't know where he was. He was right where she abandoned him. Maybe she finally has her life in a good place and can support him. Has she been in jail? You know I can't answer that. But you said she came here with two attorneys. Who hires two attorneys for a family custody hearing? I can't say anything more. She's either ridiculously rich or, or someone else is helping her out. A family member? Janelle, I cannot talk to you about this. How was she dressed? Was she really put together? Janelle. I'm not asking for state secrets here. I'm asking you woman to woman. Did she look like she had money? No. Then how can she hire a, a, a team of attorneys? Are we done here, detective? Yeah. No, one more thing. When she came to your office, was she calm and composed or fidgety and nervous? Well, I'd say more nervous, but that's not uncommon. Okay, a picture is starting to take shape here. The mother is not driving this. The attorneys are bringing her along, but why? I'm leaving now. Who would stand to gain anything monetarily from Finch living with his mother? He has nothing of value, believe me. I saw the cabin. Marguerite, do the Whitakers own the land up on Briar Rock or were they just squatters? I have no idea. It's time to do some digging. We never had this conversation. 
If two women discussing another woman's outfit is illegal, half the women in the world would be in jail right now. Remind me to never get on your bad side. What are you doing? Just burning some trash. My boat, it was on the porch. Have you seen it? Why are you here? This isn't your home. The worst day of my life is the day you showed up here. If it weren't for you, the kids at school wouldn't be mad at me. Drake wouldn't be mad at me. Dad would still have his book. The bird made a good starter. That was my grand's boat. Why would you do that? I had to start the fire with something. How else could I burn your book? You burned my journal? Only seemed fair that if Dad should lose his book, you should lose yours. Come on, hillbilly! Hit me! Let's show everyone what you're really made of. What? You miss your family? Now you know how I feel. No, I don't! My family was taken from me. You're just walking away from yours. Hey, Finch. Can we talk to you for a minute? Sure. I, um, received some information. It's about your mother. My mom? She came to CPS looking for you. She's very interested in meeting you. She did? Now, we don't know anything about her, and we're not sure why she's back right now, but we thought it'd be good if you met her and hear what she had to say. She wants you to come live with her, Finch. Are you okay? Live with my mom? Yes, but nothing is definite. If you meet her and don't want to go with her, we will fight it with everything we have. We don't want you to live with her unless it's what you want. Okay. When will I see her? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? I have school tomorrow, and I have to get homework done, and I promised Jack I'd make him a table for the treehouse. I and... know, it's a lot to think about. You don't have to decide anything right now. You can take your time and think about it. Yeah. Can I be alone for a minute? Yes, of course.
So it turns out the Whitakers weren't squatters. They owned the 125 acres of land on top of Briar Rock Mountain. Jeremiah Whitaker inherited it in 1952, and now it belongs to Finch. Well, to his guardian, anyway, until he turns 18. Oh, that's great. That much land must be worth a couple hundred thousand in today's money? Try 2.5 million. Million? That's how much Alpha Gas offered the Whitakers for it before they died. Apparently, that land is prime for fracking. Finch is worth $2.5 million. No, his guardian is, until he turns 18. And guess who knows about it? No. Enter his mother, armed to the teeth with expensive lawyers. Poor Finch. Judge Raymond is going to get an earful about this at the hearing. You can't say anything about this. I most certainly can. N no, you can't. Think about Finch. What would it do to him? His mother comes back into his life, and you're going to tell him she's only here for his money? And what if she isn't? Oh, why else would she suddenly show up? We don't really know why she's back. She may really want to be with him. We can't interfere in their relationship based solely on a hunch. Keith, I don't want her to hurt him. We may not be able to stop that. Well, I can't just stand by and let it happen. What is that? What are you looking at? Toby's grades. He's failing three classes. He's pulling away from everything. School? Us? It's my fault. He thinks I'm disappointed in him. But that's not true. I know. But I haven't done enough to convince him otherwise. Sometimes it's hard for him to let people love him. He's always been so critical of himself. He's like his father that way. You'll talk to him? Yeah. I don't think you're supposed to be up there. I think better up here. Thinking about your mom? Do you remember anything about her? Not really. Every time that I think that I can see her face, I wonder if it's really her. Maybe it's just something I'm making up in my head. Are you going to live with her? I guess that I should. You could just stay here with us. Mom and Dad would let you. I heard them say so. They did? Sure. Just tell them that's what you want. You see, that's the problem. It's not about what I want. It's about what God wants for me. Doesn't God care how you feel about it? Well, I reckon he does. But he knows what's best for me. Better than I do. Well, I'm going to tell him it makes you sad, and all he has to do to fix it is let you stay. Then you'll be happy again. Sometimes he chooses not to fix things, and I have to be okay with that, too. Even if it means you have to leave? Whatever it means. I've put my trust in Jesus my whole life. He hasn't let me down yet. If he says that I need to go, then I should joyfully. Is this one of those trials that makes you stronger? I think so. I don't like them very much. Me neither. Hey, are you still okay with this? Yes, ma'am. If you need anything, we're right here. We're not going anywhere. Anytime you want to leave, just let us know and we'll come get you. Thank you both for everything. Come on, let's move a little further away. No, he might need us. We can't just stand here and stare at them. He might need us. There's a bench over there. Come on. I never dreamed you'd get so tall and handsome. Look at you. 
We've missed so much here growing up. Why don't we step over here and let them speak alone for a moment? It's all right. Mr. Billings and his associate represent me. You need attorneys to speak with your son? Of course not. I just say the silliest thing sometimes, and I wouldn't want to say or do anything that might mess up my chances of getting my baby boy back. I haven't been a baby for a long time. Of course you haven't. You're practically a man now. Can we just talk alone, Mom? Maybe next time, Finch. Besides, when this is all over, we'll have plenty of time to talk alone. So tell me, um, do you like school? What subject is your favorite? I like English, literature especially. <laughs> oh, I never cared much for reading books. I'm really more of a magazine girl myself. I just love looking at the pictures and hearing about all the Hollywood stars and their glamorous lives. <gasps> With your good looks, you could be an actor in Hollywood movies. And then, and then you could be one of those stars that takes his mama as a date to the Academy Awards show. I just saw my first movie the other day. Your first movie? Who's ever heard of a 16-year-old who hasn't been to a movie? <laughs> They didn't have movies up on Briar Rock. Oh. Finch, I never meant to leave you for so long. I just, um, well, I, I had to take care of some things before I could come back and get you. What kind of things? Important grown-up things. You just said that I was practically grown. I'd like to know what kind of things you had to take care of. Finch, I saw to it that you had kind folks to look after you. And that is so much more than I ever had. I have been fending for myself for a long time, but not anymore. Now I have Mr. Billings taking care of my business and you to look after me and I won't ever have to be alone again because you'll be there right by my side. Isn't that right, sugar? Just you and me taking on the world. Yes, ma'am. Why aren't you good-mannered? Someone raised you right. The Whitakers raised me. The Whitakers? Jeremiah and Lila Mae Whitaker? That's who was taking care of you when you left me. Finch, let's not dwell on the past. It's also sad. Let's just keep our eyes on the future. Tomorrow, you'll come live with me. Now, my house is just a little bump in the road right now, but as soon as we sign a few pieces of paper, we'll have plenty of money to buy a nice big studio apartment downtown, right where all the action is. I was hoping we could go to the mountain, up to the cabin, I can show you where I grew up and... Oh, honey, that, that old rickety dump won't be there anymore. What? I mean, we won't be there anymore because we'll be out doing exciting new things. It's time for you and me to get out and see the world. <laughs> oh, it's hot out here. Um, I have to get into some air conditioning before my makeup melts off my face. I'll see you tomorrow, Mr. Billings. I'm not sure I want to go. What? I might rather stay with the Brennans for a while, just until the hearing. Well, I'm sorry, dear, but that's not the plan. The judge says you'll stay with me until the hearing. I don't think I want to. Well, I'm not asking you what you want. I'm telling you, as your mother, I know it's best for you. You believe in the good book, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Well, it says, honor thy father and thy mother. Well, I'm your mother. So you have to do what I say. Yes, ma'am. That's better. I'll see you tomorrow. You're still allowed another 30 minutes, Miss Haig. We'll talk more next time. It's just too hot out. Bye, sweetie. See you soon. So, what do you think? I don't know. Do you want to see her again? I'm going to live with her. Okay.
Are you sure that's what you want? You could take some more time to think about it. Thinking about it won't change anything. All right then, uh, when we get back, I'll call the judge and let him know what you want to do. Should the morning last forever, waking till the end of time? With a washed out woven canvas Cleansing through my worn out mind With the dead of night inside But sunlight peeking through my blinds Should the morning last forever Well then, maybe I'd be fine Should the morning last forever, I'd wake till the end of time. And when that washed out canvas cleanses, well, it could leave me blind. And when the dead of night's inside, well, that's when stars come out to shine. Should the morning last forever? Jack and I made this for you. You know, so you won't forget? There's no chance of that. Thank you. finished it. It's yours. You should read it again. It's even better the second time. When the sun is passing over, that's the brightest it can shine. And then when it's setting down, the colors blaze and taste like wine. And then when it's gone, it shines through the night, reminding me she's mine. Okay. Nothing lasts. Gotta get out of these shoes. My feet are killing me. Come on, boy. Unless you plan on sleeping in the car. Well, there's no room for that thing in here. Just come back and get what you want later.
Home sweet home. I know it's not the palace you're used to, but make yourself at home. Eat whatever you like. to go see after a business matter. You're leaving? Well, I told you Mama's got things to take care of. I can come with you. Not this time. Jess, get out here. Don't mess with me, I'm not in the mood. Who are you? I'm Finch. Where's Jessica? She's not here. You her boy? She said she had a kid, but I didn't believe her. I don't believe much what comes out of her mouth. Tell the truth about you, though. You look just like her. How old are you, boy? I'm 16. I don't know. Well, all right, then. Will do. Will do very nicely. You see, your mama, she owes me some money. I don't think I'm going to get that money back. But you got some work you can do for me, though. Earn that money back. Wouldn't that be the right thing to do, earn that money back for you, Mama? Yes, sir. All right, yeah. Put your shoes on. Get in the truck. Let's get to work. Mommy! What are you doing here? I told you I'd meet you at the truck stop. I was just chatting with your boy here, and he agreed to work off your debt. No. Now get out of here. You won't have anything to do with that boy. He's off limits. You got that? I'm not waiting for the money anymore, Jess. You'll get your money. Double. But I'll need another week. <laughs> Double. Yeah, right. Come on, boy, hurry up. You will. Double. No triple. Next week. Pretty soon, money's not going to be a problem for me anymore. You're a lousy liar, Jess. You always have been. Laugh it up, Bobby. But pretty soon, I'm not going to need you anymore. My son's got property worth millions. And after we sell it, we're taking off and never looking back. You're a dreamer, Jess. With your heads all up in them clouds. Dreaming gets people hurt. Look, I'll give you a few more days. But if you don't come up with double what you owe me, then the boy's mine. Don't think about running off. We'll come find you. Your mom and I have to go down to the courthouse to sign some papers. Finch's custody hearing is today. Keep an eye out for Jack and Lisa? Yeah. Toby, about what you said the other day about Jack and Finch, I didn't know that's how you felt. And I should have. I should have paid more attention to you and heard what you were trying to tell me in different ways. Sometimes it has to be just us, doesn't it? You have to know that you could never be replaced as my son. I will always be proud of you. I'm not. That's Finch's journal. I took it from him. 
I, I let him think I burned it. What? I was mad at him for losing your book, so I let him think that he lost his. Toby. I thought he was taking everything from me. My friends, my family, you. Hey, hey. Nobody's ever gonna take me away from you. Last night I looked through this and I saw this Bible verse he wrote on the first page about trials testing your faith and making you more complete. And that people without faith just get tossed around by the wind. And that's how I feel right now. Like my feet can't even find the ground. Yeah. I know that feeling. Felt that way when I quit my job and started writing. Really? Everyone thought I was crazy to leave something so sure for something so uncertain. Except your mom. She believes in me. I do too. You know, I think we'll both feel more grounded if we worry less about what other people's opinions of us are and focus more on God's. You can't be too good about me. Hey. You will always be his kind of kid. Nothing you do will change that. I want to fix this. You could ask God. Just keep it simple. Many times he gives simple answers. You learned that from Finch, didn't you? His gran, actually. A woman I would never want to anger while she's knitting. Dad, I want to go to the courthouse with you, but I need a minute first to ask a question. Okay then. You take a minute, I'll go get the car. And thanks for talking to me. Anytime. Your client is 20 minutes late to her own custody hearing, Mr. Billings. Any explanation? I'm sure there was just a traffic problem, Your Honor. Perhaps we can reconvene tomorrow. I'm not your dentist, Mr. Billings. I do not have another opening on my docket until July. We can reconvene then. Um, I, I don't believe that would be in the best interest of the mother or the child. Mr. Billings. Uh, we can proceed, Your Honor. You're late. She wouldn't come unless I got her a new dress. <sighs> nice of you to join us, Miss Haig. It's nice to be here. In the matter of custody of the minor hereafter referred to as Finch Whitaker. Haig. I'm sorry? Finch Haig. That's his name now. Miss Haig. Were we expecting anyone else? Judge Raymond, I am so sorry to interrupt. My husband, Keith, and I are Finch's foster parents. Uh, Deputy Brennan, I appreciate you coming by, but the foster parents are not required to be here for this hearing. You can sign your papers out front. If I could, there is something I, my family, and I would like to say. I object, Your Honor. This woman has a personal interest in this matter and would do anything to stop these proceedings. I'm afraid this really isn't the appropriate time, Janelle. It'll have to wait. It is very important that we speak to Finch. This isn't the time. Who are all these people? This is my family. I object, Your Honor. Pipe down, we're not in court. Your Honor, before you make a ruling, Finch needs to know that we don't want him to go. You see, Finch has become a part of our family and we can't lose him. And I need him to teach me how to hunt. This is highly irregular. Your Honor, I lied to him. I told him that he didn't belong in our house and that we weren't his family. But in a way, we kind of are. You see, we fight like brothers. I let him believe that I burned this. But I was wrong about a lot of things, Your Honor. So will you please tell Finch for me how sorry I am and that if he wants to stay with us, that's fine with me. I object, Your Honor. They're just saying everything to you that they want to say to him. Now, I move for a mistrial. For the last time, Billings. 
This is not a trial, it's a custody hearing. You can't declare a mistrial of a hearing. Young man, did you happen to hear everything they said or do I have to repeat it? I heard it, Your Honor. Good. Now listen to me, all of you. I appreciate you coming down here and I'm certain that Finch here has benefited from everything you've said. But unfortunately, the law is the law. Miss Haig is seeking full custody of her son, and since she is his biological mother, the law protects her rights. I am certain that you are a very fine young man to have won the hearts of all of these good people, and I wish it were in my power to let you choose where you'd like to live, but according to the laws of this state, that is not a factor either. I have no choice but to grant Miss Haig full custody. Well said, Your Honor. Mr. Billings, I don't like what I smell here. The law's on your side this time, but you don't want to cross my path again. I'm sorry I can't give you back your bird. Thanks for this. You were right about me leaving my family behind. I was just being stupid, and I won't do it again. Good. They need you. Problem is, we need you too. Dad's right, you should keep on writing. He should know, he's one of the best. I think you'll be a great writer one day. You think so? I know so. Your Honor, object! What are you doing? Miss Haig, I'm afraid you don't understand. I do understand. I understand that this family loves my son and he loves them. Your Honor, my client has not consulted with her counsel. That's because I'm firing my counsel, Your Honor. <laughs> I need a moment alone with my client. She doesn't understand how these things work. I believe she does, Mr. Billings. Don't get me wrong, I love Finch. I really do, but I'm not fit to care for him. You see, I got problems that have chased me around my whole life, Your Honor, and I can't shake them, yet anyway, but it's not the kind of life I want for my son. My son is gonna be a great writer, but if he stays with me, he might not get there. I see. Well, based on this new information, Mr. and Mrs. Brennan, are you willing to resume the role of foster parenting for Finch? We are, Your Honor. Yes. No, Your Honor, that's not good enough. Finch needs a stable home that he can rely on. And for once in my life, I'm gonna be the one who gives it to him. I wish to sign away my parental rights so that Finch can be properly adopted. All right then, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Brennan, are you willing to become adoptive parents to Finch? Yes. Finch, what do you say? What about Bobby? Don't you worry about anything, I'll handle him. Do this for me. It's what I want. Yes. <laughs> we all agree, Your Honor. Then it's settled. The Brennans will retain full custody with clearance to proceed with adoption effective immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Jessica. I, I don't know what to say. Say you'll help him become everything he's meant to be. Only if you promise to get better and help us do it. Walking is half the fun. Yeah. I like hiking. We're almost there. This place is so cool. Can we come here every weekend? 
We could stay here next summer while Dad writes his next book. Next book? Oh, my brother Jerry recovered the file. I sent my book into the publisher this morning, on time. That's great. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. I got you this in honor of the adoption being official and all. I tried to carve one myself, but it looked like roadkill. I know it's not your grands, but... No, it's better than my grands. When I looked at that one, I thought of her. But when I look at this one, I'll think of both of you. There's some cleaning to do, but we'll have it up and going in no time. I think it's beautiful here. To the Whitaker family cabin. No, to the Brennan family cabin. Oh my head 